There's a reason predators aim for old to sick or young targets. Healthy adults of prey animals tend to be dangerous, even when size is comparable. Elk versus wolf, bison versus komodo, lion versus elephant. Some of these predators have developed pack hunting behaviors to compensate for such risks. However, the case for pack hunting in Tyrannosaurus rex isn't confident, to say the least, so in this ultimate battles, a fully grown T-Rex attempts to devour a fully grown and spry Triceratops. I would argue that these two combatants are the most famous dinosaurs ever discovered, thanks to their size, extreme characteristics, and the fact that we've known a lot about them for a long time. In 1986, Robert Bacher estimated that 5 6 of Mestrixian herbivore fauna consisted of Triceratops. Granted, greater diversity has been discovered since then, but that degree of ecological domination says a lot about the Ceratopsian poster child. So how massive was an adult Triceratops? Estimates vary wildly, which makes pinpointing an exact muscle mass somewhat difficult. Benson et al. 2014 reports a high end of 9 to 14 tons, with the latter estimate stretching both plausibility and population statistics for most individuals. In 2010, Gregory S. Paul provided a 9.3 ton figure for an 8 meter long individual. An older estimate from Alexander 1985 ranges between 6 and 12 tons, and the museum where the 7.3 meter Kelsey specimen is kept states her to weigh 6 tons. A graphic double integration calculation performed on the 8 meter MWC 7584 yielded 7,050 kilograms, just a tad lower than allometric methods, which occasionally result in overestimations. Scaling that to a maximum known 9 meter length gives a mass of 10,037 kilograms, or about twice the size of an African elephant. Ceratopsians are scary, man. Incredible size, it's not its only defense, however, as Triceratops did possess those famous horns. The truth about killer dinosaurs created a physical model that displayed how charging into an enemy would have caused too much damage to the horns to be practical, so a stabbing and slashing behavior would have been more likely. Fark 2004, which examined stress and movement capabilities in Triceratops, concluded that it was capable of locking horns with other members of its species. A follow-up study five years later found osteological evidence that such confrontations did in fact occur, showing that Triceratops was sturdy as well as deadly. Its flexible skull attachment, a ball and socket structure, allowed it to slash its horns in a wide range to keep opponents and predators at bay. Besides being an eating machine, Triceratops was specially evolved to be good at not dying. Tyrannosaurus rex was the most massive terrestrial carnivore known with confidence. The next largest, the big spinosaurids and carcodontosaurids, are a ton and a half lighter based on preserved remains and GDI estimates. Sue will be the Tyrannosaur champion today to square off against the gigantic Triceratops, since she's the heftiest specimen with sufficiently described material. Trix is essentially the same size as Sue, but we're not likely to get a full description of her for a while yet. But Sue works just fine. I generally use her GDI mass of 8,828 kilograms, since Hartman's reconstruction had slender legs and Hutchinson et al.'s ribcage was too inflated. For the sake of conservatism, let's not use Snively et al.'s 9.1 ton mass. Speaking of Snively Tall 2018, for those of you who haven't heard, Tyrannosaurs as a group were the most agile theropods proportionally. Based on rotational inertia scores and relative muscle mass, the team of paleontologists calculated that a Tyrannosaur could turn twice as quickly as an Allosaur of the same mass. Such maneuverability definitely comes in handy when battling a spiked tank. Bite force is far from everything, although sometimes T-Rex can make it seem that way. Erickson et al. 2017 calculated a 7,800 pound bite force with 431,000 pounds per square inch on each tooth tip. Mark Norrell with the AM&H stated that this colossal bite force delivered by a 5 foot skull would cause bones to basically explode. If T-Rex managed to land a bite on an area like the neck or spine, game over. Unlike most ultimate battles, these combatants actually did live together and tried to kill one another with relative frequency. I think it's worth examining the fossil evidence we have of their relationship to help determine a winner. Erickson in Olson 1996 describes a Triceratops pelvis that had been mutilated. Nearly 60 tooth marks covered its surface. The problem is that this was very obviously only evidence that T-Rex had eaten the animal, not that it had killed it. However, Hap 2008 reports a healed Tyrannosaur bite on a Triceratops skull, where the horn partially regrew. That indicates the Ceratopsian won that particular fight, perhaps by wheeling around to catch an attacker and being bitten on the horn instead of the neck. It's ridiculous to say that T-Rex was incapable of taking down strong armed prey. I'm sure that on many occasions it did, but predators target weaker individuals to lower the risks involved with hunting. The Tyrant Lizard King, if it did attack a big and healthy Triceratops, wouldn't go berserk and ignore all injuries until it landed a killing blow. Instead, it would more likely than not sustain an injury that would force it to leave the hunt and fight another day. Triceratops takes this ultimate battles 60% of the time. Thanks for watching. Hit those like and subscribe buttons, leave a comment, and head over to the Ultimate Battles Discord server for more paleontology content. Vividen out.